how do you optimize your code for linking stage? And uh, you have provided some answers as well. Uh, link time optimization or LTO and hash pragma. I'm not sure if I understood shared library. And you are asking, are there any other methods and so on? Okay. Uh, for the benefit of everybody, I will elaborate on why you know you're talking about LTO or any of this link time uh, optimization. Okay. Now you would have seen my um, foundational video on compiler optimizations, right? So the compiler can do a lot of optimization at compile time. Now. Compilers generally work at a, a very uh, local level for doing the operation. In fact, the smallest unit may be a block within a function, and then maybe a function, and then functions across a module. Module being one source file, right? It is it is a com compilation unit. Uh, technically, it is called a compilation unit. Uh, so it's one dot C file, etc. So this is the thing that it operates one file at a time, right? So all optimizations are done based on this, uh, whatever information it has in the source file of a module. And generally it uh, does the code optimization uh, in, in this manner, as local as possible. And in fact, there are many levels of optimization. There is something called pigeonhole uh, optimization, which is done a little later after certain operations, optimizations are done. But compilers are basically myopic. They work at most at the module level. Now, what kind of optimizations compiler does across functions? They are called uh, inter-process optimizations. So, Across functions, it can do a lot of opt you know, optimizations. Now you can watch that video if you're not, and it talks about various things. Um, you would have basically uh, register allocation for global variables. Because they are global variables and you, you want to know if this function is accessing the global variable directly or through pointers. So this is called aliasing. So depending on that, uh, it has to decide whether it's you know safe to bring it to a register or go through a load store operation, right? So this is one thing. The other optimization is that uh, basically to do an inlining of the function or not. Basically, if a function is small, there are many constraints, small functions, and then they are inside a loop, etc. So the function call overhead can be avoided by inlining the function, right? Earlier, we used to manually uh, give the inlining hint. Uh, but today's compilers don't, they just take it as a hint. They don't have to obey that. They have a much more sophisticated algorithm to decide uh, to do inlining or not. Anyway, these are the things compiler does well uh, within a module. Now, let's say you have, uh, by the way, also explained in a question, you have multiple .c files, and then you have a, a function is uh, used here, and then it is uh, you know defined here. And of course, the .h file will uh, you know, uh, allow the user to know about this function. So these are separately compiled, let's say. Okay. So while it is compiling this file, it doesn't know how it is used because it doesn't see this dot .file. So it does not know whether it is inside a loop, whether it is, uh, you know, uh, what happens to the global variable, etc. Nothing, especially the functions. So it doesn't know how this is being used. So it don't, it doesn't know whether to inline it or not. For example, it's just one of the optimizations, right? Um, similarly, it could be a variable, global variable, de defined in one file, 
and used in another file. So it doesn't, while in the use, when you're compiling the usage, you don't know how it is defined and uh, how to actually uh, you know, load it or not, or is it already there in the uh, register, et cetera. Across functions, basically this is the problem. You cannot do it at compile time because you are compiling at uh, you know, one file at a time or one module at a time. That is where the link time optimization comes. So basically, um, it goes, it basically transcends the module. And uh, it has to be enabled explicitly. Um, the flow is basically like this. So you have the compiler and it produces the uh, out, you know, compiled dot those files. And then the linker, linker combines many dot row files and produces one output file. So maybe an L file, right? This is typical. What happens, the linker can be used uh, to do some of the optimization across the dot row files. In order to do that, so linker will just combine and produce an L file or a library. You know, if you're packaging a library, etc. Um, there is something called a, a link time optimizer distinct from the actual linker. What happens is the in this case, if you want to use it, you cannot work directly with the, the already generated code. So this is basically target code, which is generated by the compiler. You cannot do this kind of op optimizations. So what, what happens is if you enable, if you enable L0, the compiler will produce not the actual target code, it will produce an intermediate code. This is called the bit code or basically the for a, a virtual machine, basically. So this bit intermediate code again multiple of them can be taken by the linker and passed on to the LTO as a single bundle. The LTO does inter process optimizations and then gives it back to the linker. And then the linker will produce the final L file. Of course, in order to do the L file, it will take It'll include any libraries, pre-compiled libraries, etc., and produces the final help file. So basically, this is working with intermediate code. So this is bit code. This is also bit code, but op optimized bit code. And then this is actually the target code. So this is bit code. And this is object code. So basically, you are operating at the at the intermediate code level, so that further optimizations can be done. Um, that is what the role of LTO is. So the, having us uh, LTO in the linker stage mandates that you work with um, intermediate code or bit code. That is where the limitations of LTO also comes. Okay. So her question was. What do you do beyond LTO? So LTO will do the optimization. Now it may do many things, good, good optimization. So what are the optimizations it does? One of the things is dead code elimination. If a code is never called, it may eliminate that, etc. And of course the inlining, function inlining, and then aliasing. Etc. All this can be done by the LTO optimization. It does it in a global uh, manner across modules because it is now having access to all the compiled modules in intermediate code form, and uh, it generates the uh, this one out, output uh, intermediate form, which further the the linker can uh, translate to a final object. 
what are the limitations because of this intermediate code based uh, uh, this one. Suppose you normally have uh, symbols in the object code. You can refer them in the scatter file for loading. Right? You can refer them by name, by symbol. For example, in the loader script, in the scatter file, you'll say place uh, x, y, z, underscore, underscore in at some address, RAM address, physical address. So many times in embedded systems, you want to position certain data or code in specific addresses, right? So that is the part of the scatter file or a link a loader script that we will, uh, linker script that we write. You cannot refer by name in the intermediate code. So with intermediate code, no symbols are exposed or exposed to scatter file. So this is a limitation. So what can you do? You, you can still do, you can still place, uh, so for example, at the high level uh, sections. So normally, in order to place a particular um, object, you put it in a section and then say what address it is. Um, now, the high level sections, you can say, okay, place it in read only for code. You may, you know, many, many, whatever syntax you have, right? You can refer to that at these properties for high level sections, but you cannot have any named section in the in the scatter file, which are based on any symbols that are generated inside the intermediate code. That is one of the limitations. Now, that, that is basically, uh, how do you actually then do that? So you, there are few ways. You can give some, uh, you can actually give a flag, basically function, sections to the compiler or I think compiler. Um, basically it will place each function in a separate section. And uh, you can then um, you can basically use that to place them in the scatter file basically. That way you will when you when the linker com combines and the LTO optimizes it, the you are not dependent on on the any symbols that are used inside the uh, intermediate code. So you explicitly place them. So these section names are accessible to the scatter file. So that is one of the things that you would do. Um, so other constraints are if you have you are working with libraries. Okay, there are two kinds of libraries, shared objects and then static libraries. So with shared objects, it's difficult to do LTO because you don't know uh, which intermediate code was uh, to be used uh, for the library because you may share it with another module, another entirely different application. You will not be able to work with shared objects um, and or if you use shared objects, you cannot use optimizations for for that um, because the usage is uh, uh, not known at compile time or link time it is basically uh, you know it basically it's compiled separately anyway for the shared of for static libraries you can still do that so i i can only think of these limitations now how to improve i'm not sure basically one of the improvements is by you know it's not improvement per se but placing the uh, functions in separate sections so that you can access them in the scatter file. Bhagavi, does it uh, answer your question? Yes, Raghu, yeah, thank you. I don't know if you face this in an interview, I'm not sure the context in which it is asked, but basically what I have understood, I'm just explaining the, the need for LTO and uh, what LTO can do and what are the way it, in which it does through intermediate code and 
as a derivative of you working with intermediate code. Uh, you cannot mix and match separately compiled units with different intermediate code. For example, if you use a different compiler, uh, some Clang and some GCC and some other tool vendor compiler, you cannot, they produce their own intermediate code. Uh, they may not be compatible. So you may not be able to work with those kind of uh, separately compiled units. So while you can do LTO with the same tool chain, you may not be able to do across tool chains and mix and match. Okay, so uh, one question I had is, so for shared objects, we essentially can't do LTO, right? Because the dependencies are not known uh, earlier for us. That's that's my understanding because you don't know which other application using which tool chain, whatever. Uh, yeah, basically shared objects, optimization will be not uh, ideal. Okay, in order to enable LTO, so there is, we can use some type of like macros and things like that. Yeah. You can, or a flag. Uh, you can use a flag for that. Okay, thank you. I think it's, I'm not sure, minus F LTO or something. Very simple, you can see that it may be different for different tool chains, but it's just a flag in, you know, in the, in the make file, you can add that. Sure, okay. thank you. 